Okay, so quick video about, and I think I did one about this last year, but I think it's worth repeating. And that is a common question that comes up is, you know, on a commercial level, how do you find time to, uh, to manage everything? And systems, you do it through systems. And also, you know, bees don't require as much fiddling around as what you may think. When you're learning, uh, which may I add is a continual process, <laughs> it never ends, but especially in your first few years, dismantle your bees. I mean, learn, experience, explore. But uh, here's a perfect example. I've got six colonies here that have been, uh, actually a couple of them are breeder colonies. And the, and the others are splits, or I, I can't remember why they're here, but anyways, they're behind our warehouse. But I'm gonna come out here and assess them within probably two minutes. Pop the top. Okay, so immediately I'm seeing that there's a good cluster of bees on the the uh, four frames, four or five frames. Uh, they haven't really started working on these two or three frames yet. Honey flow is just starting. So immediately I know, okay, you know what? They could use another box here in three or four days. Move on to the next one. Let's see here. Nothing on top. So I am going to crack them open here at the bottom. Very small cluster. That one's going to warrant me coming back and taking a closer look at it at some point here probably sooner than later. This one definitely is gonna need supering. Look at that beautiful white wax. Uh, blackberries, Himalayan blackberries are just starting to bloom. That one's gonna need a super. This one, nothing at the top. Take a look at the bottom. Come on. Once again, I'm not gonna really come out here planning on doing this. Uh, come on. It's good activity in the front. And so I'm thinking probably... Okay. They've got a good cluster in the bottom. So I'm imagining, venturing to say, that they just don't need the room in the second already. So that one's good. Leave that one be. This one, let's see here. Okay, this one definitely, definitely needs a super. You can see the white combs are being drawn out, which means that they're reaching maximum capacity in this super. Now they're drawing out the uh, comb face on the outermost frame, which they're the most hesitant to do. So if they're doing that, you know that they're running out of room. So that needs a super. And this one yeah, definitely needs space as well. So there you have it. So six colonies assessed relatively quickly. Um, yeah, it doesn't take much time. Depends on the time of the year, too. I mean, this is June 1st. And so all of your queen manipulations and everything should be done by now. Um, all of your colonies should be just set up. Uh, hopefully your splitting should be done by now. And so all that's really left is just assessing them for queen rightness, queen rightness and eating space. That one that's weaker, uh, well, there's two that weaker, but the one, especially the first weak one, take a look at it. I'd probably venture to say that uh, something's going on there as far as either the queen or who knows, maybe they're queenless. We'll take a look at it. But anyway, so you can assess bees relatively quickly um, just by the way they look especially when you open the lid uh, you'll get to a point and maybe we'll do a video on that it's good for me to actually learn how to describe intuitively what I'm seeing but a lot of times just by as soon as you open the lid you can tell if a hive is queen right or not mostly by the way the bees are centered uh, if a colony is queen right and you're opening the lid, there's going to be a really good cluster of bees right in the center 
around the brood area, whereas I find that if a colony isn't queen right, the bees are sort of dispersed more evenly throughout the box. Once again, a visual would probably be the best thing. But uh, anyways, from uh, me and Casey, our, uh, our attack cat. Um, happy okay, so I thought this is a really good little educational moment. I don't know if you remember these. Uh, well, you know what? I'll just add this video to uh, to the yard I was talking about or, or observing with the bees. But there was this one, the one hive that when I popped the popped the top, you could tell that something something was off. And uh, so I just came out here today to throw some supers on the ones that needed it. And I found out very quickly what's wrong. See those white white mummies that's chalk brood you can even see some of it down there on the uh, bottom of the uh, of the uh, bottom board so in a case like this I mean it's 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 so bad that it's obviously depleting the colony I found the queen uh, you can actually see them formed a little circle around her there uh, pinched her and uh, I'm just gonna throw in one of my one of my queen cells here. And what I'm probably gonna do is uh, come back in a couple of weeks. I mean, queen cells, and that's why I highly encourage you to learn how to uh, to produce them, are very, very cheap, <laughs> very, very cheap for the uh, person producing them. And so I'm gonna throw a queen cell in there. Come back in a couple of weeks. See if uh, see if uh, she's laying. Uh, just kind of reassess. I mean, to be quite candid with you, when a colony is as bad off with chalk brood as what this one is, it'd almost be just as practical to uh, to just shake the bees out. Obviously, find the queen first, kill her, and then just shake the bees out and let them rejoin another colony. I'm also uh, going to take off their second second box and just leave them with a single because having that extra space above them when they're already dwindling in numbers is just going to cause extra stress so anyway so there's a there's a very common uh honeybee disease especially in our parts with the moisture and everything it's a fungal fungal cause um, sometimes it can be the genetics of queen uh, other times it can also be a uh, uh evidence of something that's already stressing the bees uh, such as a lack of a honey flow uh, it could be mites uh, it could be a lot of different things but uh, obviously we have a honey flow going on right now uh, we've also been doing mite counts and our mite counts are excellent so it's most likely just in this case bad genetics quick addendum these are the himalayan uh, berry blossoms I'm talking about that are starting to pop which is really good news means I don't have to spend money on feeding and uh, also means that we may make some honey this year time will tell uh, the weather that we've been getting has actually been perfect in the sense that it's been uh, kind of in the high 60s low 70s with some rain when uh, you get hot weather and it dries out, plants get stressed, go into survival mode, and don't produce the same amount of nectar, if any, which obviously uh, no nectar, no honey. So anyways, and there's Casey. there's our dangerous cat and guard cat, my beautiful wife, which, I mean, I get brownie points while mentioning that on a video, so. Right? Two brownie points. Hey, I'm going to have to go down my sliding brownie scale point scale here and see. I think that was worth like three or four, but <laughs> I'll double check. Legislation may have changed. Catch you later.